Hello! In this video, we're going to talk about integration and the lighting equation. First, the lighting equation is a mathematical formula that describes how any particular point in our, our scene should be lit. And this equation includes an integral. So first, we're going to talk about what integration is and then we're going to talk about what the lighting equation is and we're going to break down all, all the parts in it and explain what they all mean and why they're there because it isn't the prettiest looking formula. But first of all, what is integration? So, imagine we have some graph that looks a bit like this and this, this graph is going to be called f of x, with x down here. And we want to find the area from this bit to this bit, from where x equals 1 to 2. We want to find this shaded area. So the way we write this is the integral from 1 to 2 of f of x with respect to x. So these numbers here and here, they, they dictate the range over which we're looking. They say we're looking at the area between 1 and 2. This f in the middle, this is the graph we're integrating. So this is this line up here. This is the, the top of the object. The bottom is always the x-axis. And if we want it to be a different shape, then we can just subtract areas and stuff like that, so we can adapt it easily enough. We don't need to build it into the notation. And this dx at the end, this says that x is what we're varying. This is saying that x is the variable that is plotted along this bottom axis, and not anything else. So that, that's what the notation means. Thinking of integration as, as finding the area makes it reasonably clear why it's something mathematicians care about and why it's got so many uses in engineers and it appears in many, many different fields of maths. Now, there's another way we can think of an integral. So, if I go down and I get myself a, a new graph, and again we want to find the integral in, in this area. Well, we could get a rough approximation by splitting it into rectangles like this. Um, please, please imagine that these lines are all perfectly straight, but when we have a, a straight rectangle we can find its area really easily, just multiply its width by its height. And then if you add up the areas of all the rectangles, you've got yourself a, a pretty good guess at what the integral is. And if you make the rectangles narrower, you get a better approximation. So if, if we go really, really narrow, and we say, well, why give them any width at all? We just get, it's just a load of lines that are really, really close together and, and like really, really thin rectangles like this all, all, all the way down. And when we look at each line, its, its area is, is tiny. In, I mean, in the extreme, it's got zero width. And so it has a really, really small area. So integration, as well as finding an area, we can also think of integration as adding together a sort of spread out something. So at each point, there's nothing there because the thing we're adding together is spread out and we want to find the total amount of stuff over a region. Okay, so now we've covered what integration is, we'll leave how we calculate integrals to the next video, and we'll go on to talk about the lighting equation. So, if we imagine the situation, we have some surface, and we are looking at, at some point on the surface. So, the light that we observe 
is equal to the light emitted by the surface. So for most surfaces, this will be zero. But for something like a, a light bulb or a television screen, this will represent the light being created by, by the object. And then we want to add on an integral. So the first question is, what range are we integrating over? So we're integrating over the, the hemisphere of, of directions. So every possible direction coming out from this point we, we want to integrate over and we will call that direction omega i. So what, what this means is it's the incoming light ray. So let, let's just pick one for illustration. So here's an incoming light ray. So it's going to come into this this point we're looking at. So what we want to, to find is that that incoming ray contributes to what we see. And an integral makes sense because if you look in any one direction there's sort of no light coming from there. Light comes from regions. It's more spread out. We can think of this as adding together the light contributed from each of the many directions that, that can be observed. So how much light is this contributing? So the first thing is when this light hits the surface it doesn't just go towards our eye, it goes in all directions. So we have a special function called a BRDF, we'll talk about this more in a future video, but what it's saying is with these two directions how what what portion of the light coming in goes out in that direction so we'll write this as the brdf of omega i to omega o where omega o is this line here this observed direction and we want to multiply that by the actual light coming from that direction so if this if there's no light coming from that direction then obviously we're not going it's not going to contribute anything to what we see whereas if there's a really bright light that li is going to be big and so we'll get a lot of light contributed i've drawn this too close the last thing we need is omega i dot n and i'll put the omega i back in so why do we need omega i dot n so I'm going to come down and draw another diagram here. So imagine this is our omega i and we have several light rays. So they're all going to come in and they're all going to come down and they're going to be close. Now if we have them coming in at an angle, so if we draw them roughly the same distance apart. So this distance is roughly the same as this distance. But when we extend them down, you see the distance where they hit this surface is much more spread out because it's at a, a shallower angle. So what that means is the distance apart where they start sort of represents the intensity of light coming in, but the distance they are when they they hit the surface sort of represents that the light gets spread out because it's coming in at an angle. And so the question is, how much does it get spread out? We can do this with a bit of trigonometry. If we expand this down here, so I'll enlarge this diagram. And so what we want to compare is this line to this line. Now this is a right angle triangle. So we'll be able to use trigonometry to find the, the length of the edges. So the normal is up here. This is perpendicular to, to the surface. It comes out at, at 90 degrees to it. And this is our omega i, the, the direction of the light coming in. Now from our video on the dot product we know that n dot omega i is equal to the size of n times the size of omega 
times the cosine of the angle between them. Now because these are both directions, their sizes will both be 1. This turns out to just be the cosine of the angle between them. So on our diagram, that's this angle here. Now this angle here is also theta, this is just the same diagram shifted over a little. And so this angle is also theta because this part, this part here of the diagram is just this part rotated 90 degrees. Our trigonometry rules tell us that the cosine of theta is the adjacent side to it divided by the long side of the triangle. So that is this side here divided by this side here. And this represents how much the light is getting spread out because if if we have a very shallow light coming in then then this line looks like this it, and it's very similar to the to the long edge whereas if our light is coming in at a very shallow angle like this and this line here is quite short compared to this line so this equation gives us a a good way to to describe how points are lit. Now in the coming videos we will discuss BRDFs in more detail. These allow us to model how surfaces interact with light. We'll also think about how we can calculate this integral. Um, most tools for integration only work with with nice smooth looking graphs, whereas this could be a any sort of horrible looking thing. If you imagine uh, at some point you might have a light so one area is really bright whereas at another it's it's dark because you're looking into a cave or something and then somewhere else you've got an in-between bit and it's just a nasty nasty graph with all sorts of sharp edges in it. So the traditional integration techniques don't work very well which is why we haven't discussed them in this video. And what's more calculating Li, the light incoming from a given direction, well we need to use the lighting equation at a different point to do that. So the way we solve this is to say yeah we'll do that and in that lighting equation yeah we'll, we'll do that again, we'll keep solving the lighting equation inside the lighting equation. But at some point we say okay we'll stop here, the light has bounced enough and so we'll just make a guess at what it might be rather than compute the whole thing because otherwise we'll just go it th through it forever we'll, and we'll never actually come out with an answer. So thank you for watching. In the next video we will discuss a method which can be used to find approximate solutions to any integral and we will be using them in our ray tracer.